third party content has been copied and communicated pursuant to Part 5A or 5B of the Copyright Act, unless indicated otherwise. So, hi everyone. Welcome to those of you who are here uh, at the Burwood campus for this workshop and a special wel welcome to the students who are joining us in the cloud. Um, today's session is a session about referencing, but we can't talk about referencing without some understanding of academic integrity and plagiarism and a few things like that and how you can avoid getting into difficulties. So the first thing I'd like you to, to do for me, please, is to um, make a note of what you already know about referencing and what you would like to find out more about. So um, have a think. So tell me, what, what do you already know about referencing? I'll start with the people physically here in front of me and then in a moment we'll ask the people in the cloud to, to tell us also. So um, you were chatting about it. What would you like to say? Okay, in your um, course. Yeah, there are many systems. Yeah, there are many systems, but the one that we do is in following the Harvard system of referencing. Great. Yeah. Which course are you doing? I'm doing health and master's in health and human Oh, health excellent. Health. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, anything else that you know already? Uh, you mentioned you were shading the social media pages from online. Referencing is basically making sure you're mentioning mm -hmm. what you have used for okay. your information. Something that other researchers have written about. Um, and it's not mentioning in that casual way of, you know, oh, the blue book. Mm -hmm. You have a specific format to follow and you're also doing uh, Harvard because you told me you are in, in commerce. Mm -hmm. So um, you, there's a format to follow. We'll have a look at that in a minute. What about you? What course? Uh, journalism. Excellent. Um, and when using uh, online resources, it's important to uh, note the date in which you accessed it um, because referencing the sources can change. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And people are picking up on the trickiness of online referencing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't got anything about that specifically today, but it's something to, to follow up on. Um, which you can do with the writing mentors and the language and learning advisors. Um, are there, is there any input from the so students? Okay. Yes, Shreya. What um, comments have the students on, uh, in the cloud? Have they got an answer to my question about what they know about referencing? Thank you. 
Can they see the, the questions on the presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to move on to what you in the room would like to know about. Who'd like to start? You'd like to start? Uh, <laughs> um, how I, basically I, I get confused with how to uh, reference um, films, um, in particular like documentaries. So, yeah. Yes. So there is a format in the Harvard Guide, isn't there? Yes. Um, what is tricky sometimes with referencing is not just um, uh, which, you know, the what to put in what place mm, because yes, the yes. format is there but actually who is the author mm. who can be um, uh, named as the author of, of mm. something uh, Four Corners I wouldn't put anonymous I'd put um, the ABC mm -hmm. because they are the ones who've made that program for example I'm talking television rather than film but yeah, same yeah. principle yes same principle what would you like to know more about? You're, you're, you're pretty happy, yes. Basically, my main motive was to know the format as to where I have to write what, because what I was following was I used to write all the things at the end, <laughs> which was very wrong. So I need to work very, on very wrong, but yeah. it's actually not, not the right, right way, not correct, right. yeah. So <laughs> where I need to mention the author's name with yeah. as soon as I write the text, so yeah. all the format. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that sort of thing. Um, what uh, have, have, have you got anything about um, the Clara students? No, I've just asked them, um, would they like to answer, but I haven't got the response yet. So. Okay. Um, what I might do then is, is um, just wait a little bit. So we'll, we'll um, come back for their uh, comments. Uh, a little bit later, perhaps at the end, to see if there's anything they'd like to add at the end of the session. Um, so now, this is what we're actually planning to look at today. What is academic integrity, plagiarism, referencing? We'll look at Harvard and APA fairly briefly um, and f summarizing, paraphrasing and quoting and the important skill of referencing to demonstrate your critical thinking. Uh, and most importantly, study support, how to get ongoing support from writing mentors and language and learning advisors because today's session is only the very beginning of the journey and you cannot expect to know any, everything about referencing. You need to um, go on and, um, and continue to develop your skills in referencing. So let's have a look at uh, the notion of academic integrity and do you know much about that concept? Yes, so um, it is basically about honesty. So one of the reasons we reference is to show respect to the researchers whose information we're using. So when you do your assignments, you are supposed to be doing your own work and acknowledging the work of the other people that you've used. That doesn't mean that you can borrow your friend's assignment and reference them. It's, you're not supposed to be borrowing your friend's assignment. Um, you are supposed to be focusing on academic sources and referencing correctly. Carefully following instructions, providing accurate and truthful documentation, encouraging other students to ac uh, act with academic integrity. These are some of the, the principles that are in the new academic integrity guidelines and I'll encourage you to have a look at the uh, academic integrity guidelines if you just uh, search for academic integrity in the Deakin website. So why do we bother with referencing? Because it can be considered unprofessional and cheating and you've some of you might be tuning in today because there have been some issues that you've noticed. There are consequences and the outcomes can be serious. So the type of um, issue is mainly plagiarism and that can be solved by learning to reference correctly, which is what we're on about. 
And collusion is the other issue where someone, you, you borrow somebody else's work and you, or you're doing group work and it's supposed to be individual work. So why do we actually reference? Because uh, whatever work we are doing, so you have uh, argue, you have articles to support two and four, like supportive as well as against. So to find out whether what we are doing is correct, or to, it is like to strengthen or support your arguments. To support your arguments, that's good. And you're also showing that you have bothered to do some reading, research about your yep. work, to show what you have actually read and help other researchers locate the sources you've mentioned in your paper. And so it's the whole referencing thing is very fiddly and some people kind of say, why should I bother with these details? It's because you need to uh, contribute to you know, sharing knowledge and it, m it makes it uh, easier if you're following absolutely the right referencing format. So, a little quiz for you and while we look at this quiz, we're going to actually look at some of the n tricky things about referencing, okay? Now you've all studied for a, at least a few weeks, if not more than a trimester, um, and so you, you're familiar with referencing. I'm going to give you some examples of how um, people have used or misused text. So here is the original text. Many students believe that correctness is what matters most in writing, etc. Now, that's the same text from that same book. And this is how someone might um, use that material. Is it plagiarism? Uh, because there's no quotation marks and the author of the original text hasn't even been cited at all. And they've just copied it word for word. Perfect. So if you copy word for word, that's not correct referencing. Um, that much of a quote is, is silly. Um, there's a format. Watch out for it. I'll show you exactly how to format a long quote. But this is not correctly referenced because there are no quote marks, there's no block quote, and there is no in-text reference. So an in-text reference is absolutely essential for, um, for correct referencing. Within the assignment, you need to have uh, an author and date if you're using Harvard. Um, so, Chris, Melissa, and Shona, they say, yes. hello. Um, it's not. It is plagiarism because they have used no quotation marks and they haven't cited the original author. Perfect. So, um, thank you for those responses. Um, that's, you're right on track uh, with the principles of referencing. Now, Turnitin is a good way of uh, checking your own work. So if you ever quote or if you leave in a chunk of words without putting it in your own language, then Turnitin will help you find that. But you've got to use Turnitin correctly. Okay. So avoid copying. Um, you need to... Um, it's, it's not a good idea to copy and... If you do, copy, quote correctly, and you must reference. Look at this example now. It's a, an interesting one. What do you think? Is this plagiarism? Uh, 
uh, whatever they have uh, found out in the article, they have paraphrased it to in their own words, or put it in their own words. Okay. That's not the exact copy. Yes, but I wouldn't call that paraphrasing. Okay? okay. And so when people talk about paraphrasing, it means putting it in your own words, reading it, understanding it, and changing the sentence structure. Mm -hmm. What they've done here is just change one word here, one word there. Mm -hmm. So you could ask your 10-year-old son to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, they could do it. Okay. it mm -hmm. It's still copying the way the sentence is set up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so Chris is saying it's not plagiarism because there are not huge chunks of text which have been copied, and Melissa says yes because there is insufficient evidence. Um, and Dawn saying this is an extension of someone else's work still should be cited. Okay, great discussion. Thank you. So um, I I go with what Dawn is saying. Yeah. It is. Um, so closely mimicking somebody else's sentence that um, even though it is cited, it's a little bit too close. You may get away with it in your first assignment in first year, but you know they'll expect you to do better in after that. So what is correct about this? There are some things that are perfectly correct here. Uh, the citation with the author, it has been done correctly. Absolutely. So you've got the author, um, you've got Wallace Sherato and Bright with A-N-D. Why is there an A-N-D there? Because it's part of the sentence. So if it was um, if the names were in the brackets, and we'll see examples of that too, it would just have um, the ampersand symbol. So um, what the comments that I've got here are, if you change single words, it's an inappropriate use of the source. So you need to show your understanding without copying the words or the sentence structure. Example three. Is this plagiarism? Any comments from the cloud? And they are absolutely right. Um, this is not plagiarism. What's correct about it? I'll go with people here. Uh, they've summarised it in their completely own words and the citation is there. Is it completely in their well, own words? Maybe not completely, but... Um, uh, okay, just no, I see, yeah, uh -huh. never mind. <laughs> what have what we spotted? Uh, they actually have copied the whole last, the... Yeah. The red bit. Yeah. Any problem with that? Oh, no, sorry. I've seen quotation marks, sorry. I'm <laughs> well done. Um, so it's in single quotes because they're using Harvard uh, and what you can see is they've also included a page number. If you quote, you must format the quote correctly. That's fine for a short quote and um, you must include a page number. People were talking about online sources. So what do you do w if um, you're using a web page and there's no numbers on it. How do you, what do you do if you're quoting? You simply use para, P-A-R-A -A dot, and you count the paragraphs, or you can say section, you know, introduction section or discussion section para two. If it's like 900 paragraphs on the page. Does that make sense? So. I'm saying this off the top of my head and I'm using Harvard example. Look carefully at APA if you're using APA. Um, but that's the principle. Could you improve the use of this quotation? Okay. 
to be honest, what I would do is I would simply use the words boring and ineffective because that's the part that got the particular voice of the authors. The idea of the rest of it could be put in my own words. But if I want to say they are using that colourful language of boring and ineffective, then I would put the quote in. Yeah? And this is the last example, I think. What do you think? Would you call this plagiarism or not? John saying, um, I think the citing should be near the end. The citing, the citing should be near the end. Okay. Well, what citing? John? There's nothing cited here. Right. So, is this correctly referenced or not? No. Okay. So, they've done quite a good job there of summarising all of that big chunk. Um, on the left into just one sentence but after doing all that work of summarising in their own words they didn't bother to reference it. So even though Turnitin won't find this the lecturers will look at it and say I think I wrote that article or my, you know, my partner wrote this article or my supervisor said this in an article and it's not referenced and how dare they? Okay. So even when you summarise, you manage to put things in your own words, do make sure that you um, reference in text. So how do you avoid plagiarism? Well, there's the fabulous Deacon Guide to Referencing and use it to exactly follow the appropriate referencing style. The Study Success section of the UniStart site, I hope everyone has found UniStart. It's in Cloud Deacon and you have, all have access to it. You can also find it in the Studying tab in Deacon Sync. And it's so important to look at your note-taking strategies. Otherwise, you get to the end of your assignment and you don't know where this particular point came from because you didn't take notes as you went. Um, and turn it in is really good at helping uh, find chunks where you may have copied text. Sorry to interrupt, but no, no problem. Melissa has a um, question about the last example. She's asking, so where does it get referenced? In the footnote or towards the end? Okay, could you ask Melissa which uh, referencing format she uses? Harvard, okay. So, as, as you'll see a couple, couple of slides on, uh, referencing means that you have both in-text citations and a reference list. The in-text citations, there isn't one in this one, so I can't show it to you, so I'll go to the previous one. In-text citations look like this. Um, Wallace, Sherato and Bright, the year and the page number sometimes depending on whether it's a quote um, or it could be at the end of the sentence. Don't leave it till the end of the paragraph because then the first three sentences in the paragraph may not be referenced and only the last one's referenced. But that's just the sh short form it's the author, the date, optional page number. But yes, page number is not always necessary, as, as I'll point out a little bit later. Okay. Um, basically, if you're referring to something that is said all through the text, you don't need to put a page number. It's no point saying from page 100 to no page 999, the main message is this. Y yeah, but if it is found on a page or a span of pages. And again, it's suppose the articles from where we are referencing. You have three authors here. Suppose you have like eight or nine authors. So are you going to write all their names or is there a way of writing that? There is a way. Who knows? Um, is it that you put the 
the name of the author who wrote the specific chapter you're reading? Um, uh, that's a different question. So if you have an article written by a cast of thousands, mm -hmm. you put the first author named and then et al. But it depends. So look at the rules, and I think it's from one till three you do include the uh, three names, um, and then in the reference list you include all the names. And then if it's one to five, you, uh, if it's five, you might just... Uh, I can't remember the, the rules. You have to look it up. Um, uh, I'm encouraging you to use the guide because that's what we, I do. I look it up every time I need to know these things and I double check. Um, so I think with five you put you know, Smith et al and then you can also put et al in the reference list because your reference list would get too, too long and complicated otherwise. So you've just brought me to the point of the reference list. It's not just in the assignment in every sentence but also you must have details of who what is this book by Wallace Sharato and Bright? That must be in your reference list. Is that okay? Okay, and do ask your lecturers, your tutors, and ask study support well before your assignment is due. So um, make sure you're developing uh, good note-taking strategies. Don't, don't copy and paste. Use the guide to reference and I'm going to talk to you a bit more about summarising, paraphrasing, quoting and turn it in and how to acknowledge correctly. And this is not strictly speaking about referencing but some people have gotten in trouble recently because they kind of worked together in a group and all did the assignment together and you're not supposed to. Um, so if it says individual assignment, do, do it individually. And if you're doing a group assignment, you are responsible for the referencing for the whole group. So do check what other people, you know, they might have put their bit in, but it might be wrong. So everybody here in the room is using Harvard and I'm not sure what um, everybody on, online is, is using. But I'm going to talk mainly about the two most common systems of referencing. Uh, Harvard, used in commerce and many arts units in postgraduate health courses. APA is used in psychology, nursing and some education units. There are other systems. These are orthodate systems and they're based on the same principles. So this is what I was talking about. There's an in-text citation and that's the brief details but you also need the reference list giving what we call the bibliographic details. There are differences which we'll look at in a minute. Teeny tiny things relating to the punctuation and the order of elements in the reference list and some formatting variation, um, like italics when they're used and so on. Sorry to interrupt you No again. problem, um, please. Melissa has a question about um, the part that we were talking about previously about the example. She says, so we don't have to put any footnotes because um, she says she does legislation. She, she referenced legislation and it's different. Great, okay, thanks Melissa. So uh, I presume that you're doing law and law is not an orthodate system. It's one of the other systems. So um, footnotes are used instead. It's still got in-text citations and what is called a bibliography. Um, you're probably using the Australian Guide to Legal Citation. So the in-text you have a number which you automatically put a footnote in using Microsoft Word and in the footnote you have an in-text brief details of the source and then your bibliography has full details of the source that you're using. But you do need both in 
pretty much every referencing system, something to reference idea by idea within your assignment plus a list of the sources that you're, you're using. In AGLC, that's called a bibliography. In Harvard and APA, it's called a reference list. Um, and, you know, there's formatting differences with the AGLC and Harvard and APA. So that's why the guide is so useful. I've got a Harvard example here. Um, and there's a paragraph with two citations. And this is from my postgraduate help um, course, courses. So they match up with the reference list. So that's just an example of how the in-text citations match up with the reference list using the Harvard system. Anything you notice about um, these examples? Tell me what you see with the and here. Uh, outside the bracket it is A and B and and the ampersand. ampersand, yes, inside the bracket. Yeah. Okay. Well spotted. Anything else that you notice? Page number? Can you see that one has a page number and the other one doesn't? Well, that's got to do with whether that idea can be found in a specific part of the article or it's what the whole article is saying. Okay, so Don, I'm just looking at your message here uh, about legislate, um, re referencing legislation in your, your master's in HR. You would be using um, Harvard, that would be my guess. Check with your unit chair if you are in any doubt. In the Harvard guide, there is a section on how to reference legal sources using the Harvard system. So it's only if you are doing a law course and you are using the Australian Guide to Legal, your unit chair says you have to use the Australian Guide to Legal Citation. That's the only reason why we were talking about another system of referencing. Uh, in the Master of, Health of um, Human Relations, you're probably going to be using Harvard. Look for the section on law references in the Harvard Guide. What do you have to reference? Any of these things? All of these things? Yes? All. Absolutely all of those things if you have drawn upon them in um, presenting your ideas in an assignment. And you know that there's uh, formats for all of these in the guide, in the guides. So, um, if you look at, for example, the Harvard uh, section, uh, and I could have highlighted the APA as well, you really need to, um, to, to make sure that you're using both the reference list and in-text citations. The reference list shows that you've read the right kind of sources. The in-text citations show that you've understood them and the in-text citations is the way that you show that you can put those ideas in your own words and use those ideas to answer the question. Now the format is going to be very different for a book, an article, an article from a database. Any of the different sources that you find online, they're all going to have a different um, different format. So what you're looking at now, I hope you can see uh, those examples clearly enough because it's quite a long list and the font's a little bit small. There are many different formats. So is there something that you might use in your course? 
I can see radio program. Would you be using something like that? Mm, possibly yes. Possibly, but I'm not at the moment. <laughs> no, but it's likely to be similar to television program or or film. So, so this is what a reference list looks like. You notice that it's organised alphabetically by the first the the surname of the first author. So Barrican comes before the Cancer Council. Notice that the, the doesn't count. Clark, Dole, Merrin and Smith. Got all those four names. Now, I've got arrows against two of them. One of them is a book and one is a journal article. Which is the book? Which is the journal article? The second one is a journal article as it's been retrieved. Excellent. So this is one of those famous online sources. What, um, it, what you will find you're often having to reference is um, journal articles which are actually found online. So looking at this Roberts article, you can see the exact format. You've got the surname, the comma, initials, year, comma, the article title in, I, uh, in inverted commas. What's this? Public personnel management. What is that? That's the name of the journal. Good. Um, and what's this vol no business? Volume, Volume and... Volume and issue number. And what is this PP thing? Page numbers. So it's the span of pages. When you look at the journal, um, it, that it, to find that particular article, you can turn to page 1 to 22. You can see exactly where that article is. And that's why you include that in the, the reference. If it was something you found on the shelves in print, that would be sufficient. But most of the sources you find are online. Where was this one found? Uh, business Source Complete? Yes. So that is a database, one of the Deakin Library databases. So if you are using, um, a, if you are referencing a database, you must include the date that you retrieved or actually found the article. Modern articles have a DOI, a digital object identifier, which is a unique number, and you can just put that in and you don't have to give the date retrieved. So all of this is exactly explained in the guide. The format and what, um, you know, author date, those parts of the reference are in the guide. If you found your online article on a website, uh, for example, it's freely available on a public website, then you still have to have the date retrieved and you must give the full URL. So not just, uh, you know, uh, unesco.org, but the, you know, slash download slash paper 123475.pdf or whatever it is. So what's the other one that I have highlighted here? Logically, it must be a book. Yep. And what do you notice about that? Okay, um, uh, I can see people thinking aloud. 
Um, so the author and the initial of the author and the date. Yes, always date of publication, publication of the book, publication of a journal article. What's quite interesting is that more and more journals are releasing um, papers before they are actually published so that the publication date online differs from the publication date of the, that the actual paper journal comes out. So what you need to do is provide uh, the information about the source that you have looked at. If, the on, if you're looking at an online pre-publication and it says volume zero, issue zero, because it isn't printed yet, then you just um, give the publication date for the online version. Okay? Always reference what you have actually found. So getting back to this, it's a book. And you can see the title of the book. What is the thing at the end, Cambridge MA? Yes, yeah, sorry, you have a question? Oh, no, yeah. You have the answer. Um, the, the Cambridge bit is the publisher? Uh, or? No. Oh. no. Uh, try again. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's okay. Good, good on you for trying. Well, this, uh, you tell me, where's, where's the publisher? Uh, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so MIT Press is actually the name of the publisher. So, have another go. Uh, I guess it's Cambridge where it was published? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Printed. Yeah. printed. Yeah. And you're never going to find a where is it printed mm -hmm. for an online source. Yeah. So if you see a place name, mm -hmm. it's a book usually, yeah? Now what's this MA thing at the end? Well, it's short, short for the American state, Massachusetts. Yeah? Now, if this book was published in Cambridge, UK, would I write Cambridge, UK? No. 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 <laughs> because everyone knows Cambridge, UK. Okay. What about Paris? Would you say Paris, France? No. What about Paris, Texas? Yeah, there is a Paris, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> uh, you, yes, you yeah. have to put the state in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about Melbourne? No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Geelong. Actually, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's a regional town, not the capital of a of a an Australian state. Now, when you look more closely at this example list, there are many, many other types of sources there. Does anyone want to um, tell me what any of them are? The Cancer Council one, what's that? It's, it's, a, it's a web page or document from a website. So that's the heading you look under if you are looking in Harvard. Uh, it might be different, I think. Slightly worded, slightly different in APA and different in other systems. Anything oh, else? An There's an e-book. Which one is the e-book? Clark. Clark. Yes. Yeah. So it's a book, but it's not unlike the format for the Roberts journal article because it also has a date retrieved and the name of the database. Yeah? So you can see that there are some sort of in, there's some logic and a system. So don't you go, you know, creating your own system. Don't because the format is pretty much set. So if you think that instead of writing in the Roberts one it has PP 1 to 22, well, I can write PGS for pages. No, that's not correct. So follow the format exactly. Notice the full stops. 
Notice the capitals. No, notice the italics. Now, have a look here at uh, an APA reference list. Notice the capitals, notice the full stops and the italics. It's different to Harvard, isn't it? Yeah, so you, you don't want to be confused by it. Yeah, okay, don't look at it. <laughs> Cover your eyes. Um, so if you got a reference list, if you, um, you know, found an article that was written in APA and it had this an, an, uh, Antonakos, whatever, and then you went and read the Antonakos article, mm -hmm. would you copy the APA reference list in your Harvard assignment? No. But you could change it. What would you change there? Would you have full stops after the um, initials? No. no. No full stops, no spaces. Would you have brackets around the 2003? No. Some people get confused with this because some Harvard formats, the older ones, do have brackets around. Mm -hmm. And it says Harvard reference system, but there are a few and some are older and Harvard stopped making a guide. So since then, different journals have slightly different formats, you see. That's why you really should go to the Deakin referencing website and make sure that you're following the Deakin system because then every reference is going to be consistent within your reference list. You know, don't go, oh, I'll just take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. And one of the, the biggest traps that people fall into is there they are in the lovely Deakin library databases and there's a button that says, how do you cite this? And they look at the Harvard and they go, oh good, copy and paste. Sometimes some of those databases are using an older, old fashioned system. So certainly the name will be right, the year will be right, you know, all the information will be right, but it's important that you check the full stops, the capitals, the italics. Now, talking about capitals, could you look at that first example and tell me what is the name of the article? Or I'll make it easy. What is the name of the journal? Okay, capitals. What sort of capital system for the journal? Which words are capitalized? Is it every word? Yeah, the important words. Where's the journal article? research process in the health science or focus on methods, that's the article. Uh -huh. Where, which words are, which words are um, capitalized, have an initial capital? And the first research and then after the semicolon. After the yeah. colon. colon. Yeah. 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 So there's a difference between the article title here yeah. and the journal title. See how picky picky referencing is? So do pay attention to those things. Um, if I go back uh, and look at the Roberts, can you see that there's a similar principle in Harvard? The article just has the first, okay. yeah, and, but the journal name has, well, the first letter okay. of the important words. Yeah. So, if you're using Harvard and APA, here are the tips. Make sure that you include all the sources cited in your paper, but only the, the sources cited in your paper. If you are doing a law degree and you are using law referencing, then a, you are not doing a, a reference list, you're doing a bibliography and you reference everything you've read 
but in Harvard and APA it's only what you have mentioned in text in your assignment that you must include in your reference list. You so own. Mm -hmm. just, uh, like in one of our assignments, the required thing was that you need to include the reference as well as the bibliography separately. And that they say you include that in appendix, but that becomes a bibliography. Okay. So that's not um, about following the academic rules for referencing. Okay. That's about um, looking at your assignment as a teacher. Okay and you know making sure yeah. that 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 you've done work <laughs> that's it exactly um, and encouraging you to read widely and and but in the end most assignments are going to ask you to follow the normal academic okay. conventions which means if you haven't managed to weave the information into your assignment you're not going to get any credit for reading it yeah so you're listing each source only once in Harvard and APA. Some other systems have, it, uh, diff have a different way of doing it. You're listing your sources in alphabetical order by family name of the authors. Or, and this is a tricky question that some people ask, you, what if you don't know what the author is it can be the first major word of the title. Uh, don't number the list. Provide full bibliographic details following the format and make sure your capitalization, your punctuation, your italics, your spacing, you know, P dot space, for example. Um, it just, for, for academics, you look at it and you go, oh, sloppy. This is a sloppy student and um, they may not give you less marks for referencing but it's just influencing the reader because that's the level of care you're supposed to take with your referencing uh, in an academic environment. So Paris praising, summarising and using turn it in. So I promise to show you how to format your quotes short quotes. You can use single quote marks if it's Harvard. I think in APA it's double quote marks. If it's longer than 30 words, you need to um, indent the whole block and then put your reference at the end. You don't need quote marks if you have indented that block. So what do I mean by indenting the block? You make a new paragraph and then you select the paragraph and you hit tab and that makes the font smaller and then it pushes the whole thing in away from the margin. Yeah. Don't go, you know, one, two, three, four, five space, return, one, two, three, four, five space. It's just madness. Um, avoid block quotes because it doesn't show your understanding. And don't forget to reference your quotes. Most importantly, you must include a page number or, as I said, for online, paragraph number. So, para so the paragraph, oh, sorry, the difference between paraphrase and summary, we mentioned that when we were doing the quiz, you know, paraphrase and summary. Now, paraphrase means putting things in your own words and it's about the same number of words. You may need page numbers and you must, of course, cite it in text. If you're summarising, you're taking the whole information and reducing it into a few words. So you probably won't need page numbers. So in both cases, whether you're doing the same number of words or a shortened version, then use your own words. You're using your own words. Use reporting verbs. Um, the tip with paraphrasing is use different sentence structure. Remember that one where they've changed one, one word here and there? So a proper paraphrase is actually turning that sentence into your own form of sentence. And do make sure, so you can re do that by reorganising the information. 
um, to do your paraphrase. With a summary, uh, just the tip there is be concise because in one sentence you can summarise a whole article or a whole book. Um, 